We're going to be in Psalm chapter 23 once again this morning. Uh, what a great study this has been. We started out in verse 1 because whenever you're preaching a series, it's always good to start at the very beginning, right? And so we talked about the Lord is my shepherd, more than a pronoun, that word shepherd is actually a verb. That word shepherd is what he does for us. And so David sets the theme, because the Lord is my shepherd, because he is the one that is shepherding me, the good shepherd is doing his job. How do I know that? Because I am lacking in nothing. I have everything that I need to live a life that is pleasing to him. And when I am living a life that is pleasing to him, I am going to be satisfied with what he has provided for me. That's what the shepherd does. And so David sets that theme right there in verse 1. In verses 2 and 3, uh, it talks about the role of the shepherd. What is it that he does? Verse 2 says this, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He finds that place where I can go for sustenance and that place where I can go for rest. It says, he leads me beside still waters. He brings me to a place of refreshing streams. Now, it's been said that the human body can go without food for quite a while. <laughs> Some of us a little bit longer than others, maybe, okay? Uh, but that's how our bodies are designed. We can go without food for a while, but you cannot go without water for too long before you start having serious problems. Look at what it says here. He leads me beside pools of refreshing. He takes us there. When you and I don't know where we're going and we have no idea what to do and, and we're going this way and we're going that way, in those storms of life that come, how refreshing is it to know that the shepherd already has those places of provision set. I just need to follow him and let him lead me. And he takes me there. So as we look into verse 3 uh, this morning, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, there's a big list of people in Scripture uh, that have wandered away from God and have needed restoration. They have needed to have their fellowship with God restored. I think of Jacob, Samson, uh, David, the writer of this song. You know what? Uh, did David experience dark days in his life? You better believe he did. And that is why David could write <laughs> of the restoration that takes place when we fellowship with God. We know that Peter struggled the same way, didn't he? Did, was Peter filled with doubt? Yeah, he sure was. But yet restoration could take place. The Apostle Paul as well. The Apostle Paul needed to come to a place where he recognized, I need those refreshing waters. I need to find myself where God has placed me with his provision. Sometimes we're looking for provision ourselves. And we're looking for the provision that we make. Where does our provision come from? Does it come from me? No. You know what? It comes from the shepherd that is mentioned here in Psalm chapter 23. It is our nature to wander from the shepherd the hymn writer Robert Robinson put it in a hymn. Come thou fount of every blessing. One of, the, one of the phrases in there, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. And you know what? That could be a defining phrase for all of us because at one point or another in our lives, and you know what? For some of us, it's been several points. Maybe it's been many points in our lives. This becomes our theme. I feel like I'm wandering. The very God that takes care of me, as I wander, I'm saying that the shepherd doesn't know how to lead me, his sheep, to places of provision. This morning, I want us to look at God's prescription for wandering. 
When your feet start moving and you don't know where you're going, let me encourage you, uh, God has got this. So verse 3 says, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The reason that I don't lack anything is because he is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. I can find rest in the shepherd. And that same theme, continuing in verse 3, we're going to see that we cannot separate the idea of God restoring my soul from him leading me in paths of righteousness. And then as we talked about last week, uh, he does it for his glory. He does it all for him. We are the recipients of his leading, but ultimately, when he says, I am the good shepherd, you know, he is giving us an ironclad guarantee. I'm the shepherd. Shepherding is what I do. It's what I continue to do. And so we see here in verse 3 that he does it for his name's sake. It says, it's, he restores my soul. Especially in the New Testament, that word soul is used, it usually refers to the immaterial part of man. Uh, when it's used that way, it's helpful to think of it as consisting of our mind, our will, and, and our emotions. That's generally what we think of when we think of soul. But here in Psalm chapter 23, the Hebrew word, literally what it means is the whole person. He restores me. He restores my mind. He restores my emotion. He restores my will. He restores my whole being. How many of y'all have ever just been so tired you don't even know where you are? Have you ever been to that point? Okay, so here, uh, let's see, when was it? Uh, it was Tuesday or Wednesday, I don't remember. Um, my neighbors decided to have uh, a concert at like 11 o'clock at night. And they have a drummer. Everything is wipeout. You all know the song Wipeout, that big old drum solo? Everything is wipeout to this guy. And it went on and on and on. And, and uh, one of the neighbors apparently uh, called uh, the local constabulary. And they came and told them to dial it down. Thankful for that. Then I couldn't get to sleep. I don't hear him wipe out all night long. I couldn't get to sleep. Okay. So here it is. It's about 1.30 and I'm just, I'm doing this. My bride, bless her heart, she's just sleeping soundly. <sighs> so I decided, well, I might as well get up. I'm not doing any good here. So I'll go out and I'll do some reading. That, that'll put me to sleep. It didn't. And so the alarm went off at 5 and, um, well, I hadn't slept. I was able to catch that alarm real quick. And uh, boy, it was just, it was a short night. It was a long day. I got home the next night and I told Karen, I don't even know where I am. I'm just tired. And she looked at me, Harold, she laughed at me. She laughed at me. She says, well, go to bed and take a nap. I laughed at her. If I'm going to bed, I ain't napping. I'm staying in bed. So I went to bed real early. I don't even remember getting there. I, I have no idea. So I woke up and I was all nice and refreshed and I was just, boy, the next morning it was great. I woke up at 1.30. <laughs> uh, that wasn't so great. And so I got up and because I felt like I had the strength of 10 men. Here's the thing. It took me a long time to get my body back to the schedule to where I could sleep when I'm supposed to and where I wasn't so tired and drug out. It was awful, okay? There are times when we need to be refreshed, right? And I would dare say I'm not the same person that has found themselves in this situation. Uh, we need that refreshing. Uh, Psalm 23, uh, verse 3, shares with us that we are refreshed. The whole person is taken care of. Why is that so 
important? Why is it so important that he restores all of me? Because all of me is in need of restoration. All of me is. You know what? It's easy to look at the physical aspect of things. It's easy to know when you're tired and when you're run down. You know what? When you're tired, what do you do? You rest, right? For those of you that are retired, you have a little more time to rest. Praise God for that. Marilyn, I got a ways to go yet. (laughs) But physically, when you're tired, you know what those signs are. And you're able to rest. Here's the danger. You know what? There's so many other times when we find ourselves in need of refreshing, when you feel like you've been trudging through the desert emotionally, spiritually, mentally, you find yourself trudging through the desert and instead of looking for an oasis, you just keep on going. And you keep on going. And you keep on going. And that restoration does not take place. We need to examine what restoration means. Really, what it means this is this. It means that we are turning back. We are turning back the clock, so to speak. We are returning to something that once was. And so um, I'm not into cars very much. I'm thankful I have one. Uh, my wife can say, yeah, that's a 57. Uh, I wasn't even born then. She's not here so I can pick on her. She wasn't born then either. Uh, but she knows her cars because her family was involved with that to a certain extent. And so she finds great joy in that. When you buy an old car, when you buy an old car and you're going to get it back to the original, what's that called? I'm restoring a car. And so what do you do? You know, you, you go to all these shops and you buy this little turn signal. This is a little thing. And it has to be the right one or else, you know, you can't put a 58 and a 57. You just can't do that. That's not right. And so you get all of the original parts and you start putting everything back together again. You return the entire car inside and out into its original condition. And David says that is what the shepherd does for the sheep. He restores them completely inside and out, takes care of the whole person. So the question becomes, um, what is the shepherd returning me to? Have you ever wondered about that? I remember when I'm studying, it it says here, um, if I'm going to be restored and I'm going to be returned to something, what am I being returned to? Uh, Before we answer that question, let's make clear what David isn't saying, okay? Because we need to know this. Uh, He is not in any way implying that a person uh, can somehow lose his or her salvation and then have that salvation restored again. David is not saying that. That would require that Jesus was someone's shepherd for a period of time, ceased to be his shepherd, And then continued on with that. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. It gives that continuity there. The verb that is used makes it clear that the Lord never ceased being his shepherd. The Lord never ceased providing for him. Even in his wanderings, even as he was going off and he was doing his own thing, the shepherd never stopped providing for him. Yet through all of this, David acknowledges that there are still times in his life when he needed the shepherd to restore him. That is why in Psalm chapter 42, verse 5, David wrote, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil with me? That is why he could write that. He could say that... uh, My soul is cast down. And to a shepherd, that would be a a very familiar phrase. It describes a sheep that gets stuck on its back and needs help to get back up again. Sometimes I think that's like you and me. How many times do you find yourself flat on your back and you need help to get back up again? I got down on the floor with the dog this morning, Molly. 
I got down there with her. Again, Karen la- Karen's done a lot of laughing at me lately, okay? Uh, but she laughed at me. I was down there. I said, oh, I think I need help to get back up again. Sometimes we find ourselves in need of help, don't we? When a sheep is on its back, it needs help to get turned around and to get righted and to be made whole again. That is what the shepherd does for us. We find ourselves cast down. And if we don't have the help of the shepherd, bad things are going to happen. For the sheep, if this happens in hot weather, they could literally die of starvation because they can't get up. In cool, rainy weather, it might survive a little bit, but that is why the shepherd takes inventory of the sheep. That's why the shepherd is always doing the head count and making sure that all of the sheep are there. What happens if one of the sheep is missing? What does the shepherd do? The shepherd goes and looks for that sheep. For that one that is cast down, he makes him right again. How do we apply that to us? You know what? We have the tendency to wander away from the shepherd. And as we are doing that, as we are going off doing our own thing, we get further and further away from here and very often we don't even recognize how far we have gone from the shepherd. And sometimes we stop to rest in a place that is off the path that the shepherd has prepared for us. We end up flat on our back. We're unable to right ourselves without the help of the shepherd. So what is it that the shepherd is returning me to? It says it in the next portion of this verse. He is leading me in paths of righteousness. When I follow the shepherd on the paths of righteousness, my life is abundant, fulfilling, and joyful. But when I quit following the shepherd, when I decide to go my own way, when I find myself off of the path that the shepherd is leading me in, I lose out on those things. I get tired. I get discouraged. Um, can I say it this way? Very often we just throw up our hands and we give up. We are being led on the paths of righteousness. All of that maneuvering, all of that hiding that we do, all of that wandering that we do, we get tired and we struggle. We can't find provision because we are looking for provision ourselves instead of looking at the provision that the shepherd has provided. The problem is we often get so busy when we're doing that that we don't recognize that we have wandered off of the path and that we are in need of respiration. That is why verse 2 and verse 3 just go hand in hand together. It is only when we have taken time to enjoy the peace that God provides by resting in the presence of the shepherd that we slow down long enough to even recognize that we've wandered. We need to know that sometimes we get so busy And you know what? Our wandering may be the result of what we think are very good things. Okay? Uh, Let's use our calendars as an example. All of us here are busy, busy people. I pick on all of y'all that are retired, okay? But watch this. Um, Since you have, Marilyn, since you've retired, you're busier now than you ever were. And I kind of laugh at that, okay? I just do, but the reality is, whether you are working, whether you are retired, we are all busy people. We have jobs, we have families, we volunteer, we do this, we do that. And we can be doing just some wonderful, wonderful things. The problem becomes, if we're looking at those things, and we are finding ourselves wandering off the path that God has placed for us, we find ourselves in a bad place. 
Oh, to be able to slow down long enough to recognize that we have wandered far away from God. Now, now is the time I'm coming home. We need to be able to slow down and to recognize that. So you say, how do we slow down? You know what? The best way to slow down is to spend time with God each and every day. Don't ever, ever, ever find yourself so far away from the shepherd and how he provides. Don't ever find yourself so far away that you're looking for your provision instead of the provision that he provides for you. How is it that he restores my soul? The question is answered. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. He restores or returns me to my original condition of following him on those right paths. Sounds simple, doesn't it? You look at that and you go, oh yeah, I got this. We all struggle with this. That's why he gives us a prescription for our wandering. You know what? Restoration is the work of the shepherd, isn't it? You know what? Can, can we right ourselves? You know, if I find myself uh, flat on my back, is there any way I can, I can put myself back together again? Is there any way that I can restore myself? No, I can't restore myself. That is the job of the shepherd. He restores my soul. As a sheep can't do that, you can't do that. It is the shepherd who restores us. If Jesus is my shepherd, he invites me to follow him on his path. He invites me to follow him. You know what? He doesn't give me a kick, does he? He invites me to follow him. It is up to me to accept such a gracious and loving invitation to experience God's provision and grace as I am on that path that he is leading me down. We used the illustration last week about, about uh, the shepherd out east and, and how the shepherds always led, but when the tourists came, there was a gentleman who was behind the sheep and was telling them what to do and this and that. And the tourist went to the, uh, went to the guy and said, I thought shepherds led from the front. And what was his response? I'm not the shepherd, I'm the butcher. Knowing who you're following. Knowing where your provision comes from. That's why it says here, he invites us to follow that path. God's prescription to my wandering is to invite me to follow him and to be found in his path. How do we do that? Well, there's three things here. How to follow Jesus on his path. First of all, trust wholeheartedly in the shepherd's leadership. Trust wholeheartedly in what he does for us. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 5 and 6. Most of us can probably quote this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Sheep can't come up with their own migration routes. They can't make it from point A to point B without somebody leading them. They have to commit themselves 100% to the shepherd that he's going to lead them down the right path. Let me share with you this morning. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He will lead me down the right path. I don't have to question the direction that he is leading me. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not thinking about that God needs my help to lead me down the path. So when you get to a fork in the road, uh, guess what? God knows which way to go. And he's going to lead me that way. How dare I think? And how dare I say, God, you're calling me this way, but I see greener pastures over here. 
I think I'm going to go over here for a spell. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. When it comes to the leading of God, to take yourself out of this equation, because God knows where you are to go. We need to pray that God will develop in us our trust in his guidance. His word already says he's going to lead us. Okay? What is, what is the thing that, that scares us the most when it comes to trusting God's provision? It's simply this. God doesn't know what he's doing. I think I'll do it this way and it'll turn out okay. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and with all your understanding. Lean not on your own understanding, rather. God does not promise to lead us on paths of prosperity or popularity or comfort or even happiness. You know what? The journey isn't always going to be what you and I might consider a great time. Because there are struggles along the way, aren't there? And you know, here within this church, we have seen this. You know what? According to my definition of fun, life isn't always fun, is it? Because there are so many things that happen to us. There are so many things that happen to our loved ones. God does not promise to lead us on paths of prosperity, popularity, comfort, or even happiness. He does promise to lead us in paths of righteousness. These paths will often include pain and discomfort. Very often they will. And we don't like to hear that. We don't like to be in pain. I'm allergic to pain. I like it. How many of you all just love to be uncomfortable all the time? Some of you have lived with situations like that for a long time. And you know what? Living in that arena is not fun. Living that way, it, it hurts. And it causes a lot of pain and it causes a lot of anguish. He promises to lead us in those paths and very often it will include pain and discomfort, but it's always done for a purpose and for a reason. Maybe that is what is needed. Those periods of pain and discomfort when all of a sudden I'm not relying on my provision because there's nothing I can do. I am relying on the provision of the shepherd, Psalm 23.1. And as I am doing that, he is giving me what is needed to develop holiness in my life. You see, we don't often equate holiness with our journey through pain and suffering. We don't often equate holiness as something that, that we are walking toward even as we are going through periods of despair as we are going through periods of grief, okay? It may be a job situation. It may be a financial burden that you're carrying. It may be a family issue or concern. It may be a loved one that finds themselves actively passing, as we see with Corey and, and his family right now. Why does... The shepherd lead us down these paths because it's all about the provision that he gives to us. And it's needed to develop our holiness. That is how restoration takes place when I am wholeheartedly looking to the shepherd. If Jesus is my shepherd, he invites me to follow him. Number two, Obey the parts of God's will that I already know. So, we already know that God's word is full of promises, right? And it explains what God's will is for us. 
First of all, it's God's will that we come to Christ. It's God's will that we are saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2, this is good, and it's pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It is God's will for us to come to Christ. It is God's will for us as his children to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. It is the desire of God that as we are living life, we are being filled and filled and filled. You've heard me use the example of the coffee cup. I use coffee because that's what I drink, okay? If I keep pouring coffee in the cup, pretty soon the volume in the cup fills up, doesn't it? What happens when it gets to the top? It runs over. over. That's going to be verse 6, okay? It runs over. And that is the picture of the filling of the Holy Spirit. It is God's will that each and every day we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Here's one that we don't care for too much. It is God's will for us to suffer for doing good. Okay? And Scripture teaches that. 1 Peter chapter 4, Therefore let those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Are you struggling today? You're doing good and you just feel like you're being hammered down? Praise God for that. You have direct access to creator God. It says here in 1 Peter chapter 4, that those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. The Lord is shepherding me. The Lord is taking care of me. And when that is happening, when I am doing good and I am paying the price for doing good, I can know, I can know, I can know that God is taking care of me, even as I walk through those dark valleys, even as I go through things that I don't understand, things that I don't get. Here in a few weeks, I'll be going to Milton, uh, Wisconsin, for association. I was up there earlier this year, absolutely loved it. Um, We stayed, Judy, when we were there, we stayed at the camp. And uh, we just had a great time. I found every hole-in-the-wall coffee place in Milton and Janesville. It was fantastic. Me and one of the other pastors, uh, we went out very often and did that. And so we'd get the name of a place, and, and because the pastors aren't known to be smart, uh, I put it into my GPS because I can't follow directions very well, right? And so I, I typed the address in there, and I put that up on the dashboard. I said, okay, Chris, let's, let's go get some coffee. I got the address. Uh, invariably, uh, each and every time we would go out, uh, we would be talking or yapping or or laughing or doing something, and we'd miss a turn. I had the directions right there, and what makes it even worse, my GPS talks to me. But I don't listen. And so we would be going down the road, and and, and we'd be talking or laughing or something, and Chris would say, "Uh, it just said to turn right. It's like, oh. Yeah, I got off course, didn't I? And you know what? Uh, That happens to us all. GPS is meant to take us where we need to go. But in order for it to take us there, um, as the driver, I need to pay attention. As the driver, I need to not only focus on the road, but I need to listen for that voice. And can I say, whenever I make a mistake, it tells me so. Those dreaded words, recalculating. (laughs) <laughs> you know what? How many times does God look at me and say, hey, you're off course. Let me restore you to that proper place on the path that I have for you. There are times, and this happens often, we need to make a spiritual U-turn. It's called repentance. We need to let the Lord Lead us. Number three, 
we get to express our joy in the provision of the shepherd. We delight in the shepherd. You know what? Uh, Invariably, there are some sheep that just keep wandering off over and over and over again, and they don't seem to learn their lesson. Now, as the shepherd, the shepherd loves his sheep. And so when those same sheep keep going off course, you'll never see a shepherd that will say, "Ah, I'm tired of him. I'm not going to waste my energy on him anymore. The shepherd takes care of his sheep. Over and over and over again, he pursues them. But then there are the sheep that delight so much in the voice of the shepherd that they stay within the voice range of the shepherd. They stay so close to the shepherd. I can remember my son. We adopted my son when he was eight years old. And uh, he didn't know who the mom and dad was. I can remember we went to a, we went to a department store. I, it was Sears or something like that. He wanted to look at tools. Okay, let's go look at tools. It was a big store. And he really hadn't been in, in anything that big before. And so as we're walking in, he took my hand. Eight years old. He took my hand, and we went walking in there, and we went up the aisles and down the aisles. Pretty soon, he started getting a little adventurous. He wanted to go look at drills. Ha! Ah, my boy. And so he went, and he was looking at drills, but he was constantly looking over his shoulder just to make sure I was right there. Sometimes he would call out, Dad, I'm right here behind you. He made sure that he stayed where he could see me, where he could hear me. You know what, as a father, I took great delight in that. How often does God delight in you as you are staying within the range of his voice as you are listening to him? And even more so, as God delights in you, as the shepherd delights in his sheep, We are sheep. How often do we delight in the provision of the shepherd? Psalm 37 verse 4 says this, Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will give you the desires that are consistent with what his will is for you you. Find a great delight in the shepherd this morning. This is how he leads us in paths of righteousness. If Jesus is my shepherd, he invites me to follow him on his path. One of the most important things that I can do is to delight in him. Trust wholeheartedly in the leadership of the shepherd. Obey the parts of God's will that I already know. Delight in those. Delight in the provision of the shepherd. Do you love God with your whole heart, but you still find yourselves wandering? Prone to wander? Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love? Let me say this. If that is you this morning, you are in great company. Can I say that? Because that has happened to us all. And lest you think that the people of Scripture were perfect, uh, newsflash, you're no different than they are. They too were prone to wander. As the shepherd has restored them, the shepherd restores us. Even today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, that as the shepherd, you are in the business of restoring us. Father, how we need that restoration, how we need, Lord, to be led. I pray that we would be willing, Father, that we would give up our control. Sheep have no control at all. 
Father, I pray we give up any vestige of control that we think we have. And Father, that we just wholeheartedly follow you. And Father, that we love you and that we serve you. May we never be so far from you that your voice is distant. And the provision that you provide for us can't be found because we are looking at providing for ourselves instead of relying on you as the shepherd to do what you do, and that is to shepherd us. Father, we thank you for your word. And Father, the prayer is this, if there's somebody here this morning, Father, they just need to experience your grace and restoration. I pray that this morning would be the time that that happens. Father, that they would come to you, that they would delight in the work of the shepherd. And Father, that we would be thankful for your provision and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.